Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am filming my top five favorite designer fragrances in my collection. I just filmed uh, my top five favorite niche fragrances and so I wanted to also do designer, which was actually a lot harder to pick because there are a lot of designer houses that have privé or private blend lines. Um, and I didn't want to include them um, because they're more niche pricing and not something that you can just like walk into a Sephora or an Ulta and find. Um, there's also Kayali fragrances and there's been discussions on whether or not those are considered designer or niche fragrances. Uh, and since I wasn't sure which one they would be categorized as, I think of Kali as designer, but some people are saying it's niche, I thought I would exclude those. If not, then Kali would have been in this list. So let me start off with Giorgio Armani's C Intense. This is an amber floral fragrance. The top notes are black currant syrup, the middle notes are Turkish Rose and Devana, and the base notes are Benzoin and Patchouli. So I think I tried this, I think I got a sample probably when it came out in 2021 uh, and purchased a bottle in 2022, I believe. I tried the original C years ago. It smelled nice, but it was a little too much for me. I don't think I was ready for it. But by the time I was getting into fragrances, like serious fragrances and not just, uh, you know, more tame body splashes that were a little more mild, uh, my nose had matured a little bit. So I thought I would give this one a try. And especially because of the black currant syrup note in there. And I love black currant. I love blackberry in fragrances. So I got a travel spray. I think I went through half of it, then sold it and went and bought the big bottle because I'm impatient and couldn't wait to go through a travel before I got my hands on this. And Macy's was having a sale. So I do believe I got this for $64 or $68. And this is the 100 ml bottle. So I couldn't pass up that deal. But I really love this fragrance and I get a ton of compliments on it. It is sweet. It's a thick, syrupy sweetness. That black currant syrup note is definitely here and she didn't come to play. Um, but it's not, to me, it's not too cloying. It's not overpowering. It doesn't give me a headache or anything like that. And I'm trying to think if, I don't necessarily pick out the rest of the notes. I know what Devana smells like, so I kind of get that feel of it in here, but I don't necessarily pick it out. I do pick up the benzoin and patchouli in the base, and I really enjoy that because it does give it that nice, warm, uh, ambery, sexy feel to it. I really love this one. I do recommend it, uh, but I do recommend sampling it on your skin first because patchouli is not for everybody. And the black currant syrup note, if you're not into that, could be too much. It could be uh, nauseating for some people. But I love this one. So glad to have it in my collection. And I have a little bit of a dent in it, but I know I'll be reaching for it a lot more soon. The next one I have is YSL's Lieb Intense. Uh, I originally had the just the original version that came out. I really liked that one. It smells really great. I love a lavender note. I don't find it to be masculine at all. When I was younger, my mom used to give me a lot of uh, body shop fragrances, uh, or not fragrances, products. And the scent profile of the ones she would give me were the lavender ones. So I've always found it very sweet and calming and soothing. So I really love that note. This is an amber fougere fragrance, and it has top notes of lavender, mandarin orange, and bergamot. The mid is lavender Tunisian orange blossom. Yeah, I can definitely smell that. Uh, jasmine, sandback, and orchid. The base notes are Madagascar vanilla, tonka bean, ambergris, and vetiver. So I had both the original and the intense version, and thought I would wear the original one more in the springtime and then wear this one when it was cooler. But what I found was I was just reaching for this one more than the original. They definitely have a similar DNA profile, but this one is deeper 
it's a little bit sweeter. Uh, the base notes just make it a little more sultry. So overall, I find it to be, I find the original to be a sexy scent, but this intense version to me is an even sexier scent. I enjoy wearing it more. It matches my personality more. So I went ahead and decluttered that one, I think back in 2022, I believe I sold it and stuck with this one. And I really love this fragrance. I do love orange blossom. Uh, so if you're not an orange blossom person or, or a lavender person, definitely sample it. It's not a safe blind buy. It is it has a presence. This perfume has a personality for sure, but I really love this one. I think I've gotten a compliment every single time I've worn it and every time I put it on, even if I'm unsure of what I want to wear and I just reach for this one, I always feel really great about the decision I made to put this one on. So glad to have this one in my collection. The next one I have is Valentino uh, Born in Roma Coral Fantasy. This is, I believe, a fruity floral fragrance. Uh, top notes are kiwi and Brazilian orange. And I was really skeptical about that kiwi note. Uh, mid, mid notes are Indian jasmine, rose, and ambrette. Base notes are white musk and Texas cedar. So I have the original. Love that one. Uh, but when I saw this Coral Fantasy, even though I liked the looks of it and how it was kind of presented, I didn't think I would like it because of the opening notes. Um, I thought the kiwi would smell strange. I thought it would smell like candy or gum or something really synthetic and it wasn't getting good reviews, but I managed to get a deluxe sample bottle and tried it out, loved it, was addicted to it, and purchased the whole bottle. Um, I haven't made too much of a dent in this one because I got this when summer was almost over after I had gone through the sample bottle. But I love this. It has the most juicy, bright, citrusy, sweet, but like a natural sweet, not like a candy sweet opening. And then the mid is where I kind of get the similarity between the original because I believe they're using that same jasmine note and they both have that same juicy opening, just diff different very juicy openings. The original has a dark berry opening. This one has a brighter citrusy opening. And then it has the uh, musk and cedar in the base. I love a musk fragrance. I love a woody fragrance. So this to me is a perfect spring, summer, and into early fall, but it's not something I actually have a desire to reach for once the weather gets colder. This is a very kind of warm weather, happy day type of fragrance for me, but I love this one so much. I'm glad it's starting to look like it's warming up outside because I'll be able to put this on my fragrance tray soon and wear it every day like I was doing last summer. Speaking of Valentino, I have the original Born in Roma. This is categorized as an amber floral fragrance. Top notes are black currant, pink pepper, and bergamot. Mid middle notes are jasmine, jasmine sandback, and jasmine tea. A lot of jasmine. Base notes are bourbon, vanilla, cashmere, and, and guyac wood. That's what it's in there. I can never remember what kind of wood it was. This is definitely one of my favorite perfumes in my collection. This is so good to me anyway. Um, I love black currant, blackberry notes in fragrances, and I get a big blast of that in the opening. It's very juicy. Um, and the pink pepper kind of gives it a little bit of a kick, but not a spicy kick. However, in the summertime when it is super hot where I live, the pepper does warm up on my skin a lot more and that's almost all I can smell. So I save this for fall, winter, and springtime. So I'm going to be using this up as much as I can before summer gets here. As you can see, the bottle's almost gone. So I might as well use it up and then I can crack into my backup bottle once the weather cools down again later on in this year. But I find this to be a good signature worthy scent. Yeah, I think you could wear it every day. I don't think it's too much to wear during the day, every day for random stuff. But I understand because of how juicy and intoxicating and sexy it is, especially the base, that bourbon vanilla and the cashmere and guyac wood, very sexy. I can understand some people only wanting to wear it out um, for, you know, 
something fun out in the evening or on a date night or something like that. But I like to just wear this around the house for me because I truly love the way it smells. It makes me so happy when I smell this. And the fifth fragrance I have is Dior's Poison Girl. Uh, this is an amber vanilla fragrance and I am trying to remember, I believe, I'm sure that the first time I really took notice of this fragrance was on Paulina Shar's videos. She talks about this one a lot. Um, and I saw it in Ulta and Sephora and I had sampled it, like sprayed it on my skin or a card once, again, before I was really into perfumes. And I don't think I was ready for it. I, I didn't think it smelled bad, but it definitely wasn't for me. Um, there was a note in the top that just kind of turned me off a little bit. I wasn't sure what it was. But again, um, as my nose matured a little bit and I started trying new fragrances and the way it was described and talked about and reviewed, I got a little bit a little bit curious. So I went into Sephora and spritzed the EDT version because that's all they had in the store at the time on my skin and liked it. It was nice. It was pleasant enough. Um, wasn't ready to buy a bottle just yet, but I did like it. And it was on my wish list of things to get when there was a sale. Then I heard the EDP was so much better and it was being discontinued and I went into a panic mode. I don't know why because I had never smelled it before to be devastated that it was discontinued. So I went and bought a bottle and I actually did get it on a very, very good sale. I believe I bought this from Fragrance X or Fragrance Net. And so I got it for a really good price. This is the 100 ml bottle, I believe, yes. Um, and the top notes of this are bitter orange and lemon. And I think the bitter orange is what bothered me when I first smelled it. I wasn't ready for that. The middle notes are damask rose, grass rose, and orange blossom. The base notes are vanilla, almond, tonka bean, talu balsam, uh, balsam sandalwood, cashmere, and heliotrope. There's a lot of notes in that base. So... So just smelling it from the bottle and when I first spray it on my skin, what I do smell the most of is the bitter orange and the almond. So it's a base note, but I get it throughout, especially the top and I think the mid more than I do the base. I'm sure it's there in the base, but in the base I'm starting to pick up on other things. Um, the orange blossom, it's not that I smell it specifically, but I can... It gives me that same vibe as some of my other fragrances that have orange blossom. So that's how I know it's in there. It's almost like a, it's like a sweetness and a little bit of a thickness in the fragrance. So I've noticed that for most of my fragrances, the orange blossom, they have that similar type of tone to it. And once this dries down on my skin, like I love it from the beginning to the mid, but the the dry down is where I think it gets really sexy, really creamy. Um, it, dark, very seductive. I love this fragrance and I have gotten compliments when I've worn this one. Uh, and this is one of the fragrances that I have a couple of backup bottles because once I smelled it, realized I loved it and had heard it had been discontinued, I freaked out even though I know how long it takes me to go through a perfume and bought another backup bottle. Uh, this is actually back in stock so maybe they were just reformulating or they were just out of the stuff to make it. Maybe production was backed up. I don't know, but don't feel the need to go crazy buying this because I have seen this back on uh, Dior's website. It's all over the place. You can buy it from Fragrance X, Fragrance Net um, on a good deal. So don't feel like you have to scramble to get this anymore. It, As far as I can tell, it has not been discontinued. All right, here are all five of my top favorite current designer fragrances in my collection. I know this will change. I have more fragrances on my wish list, other things that I'm sampling. I'll probably do an updated one either at the end of this year or next year, depending on how much I buy. But this is what I have for right now. If you have any recommendations, please leave them below in the comments. I'm always excited to try and sample new perfumes that I haven't thought to sample or that I just haven't heard of yet. Um, if you have any questions also, please feel free to leave those in the comments. I do try to read through and answer all of them. 
this is, I think, all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.